So what is one of the most expensive products that Creality makes? You can definitely see this is not a 3D printer. In fact, this is a diode laser. We're gonna walk through how this compares to the other machines that are out there. It actually stacks up really well. And there's a few key features, specifically right here and right here, that I haven't seen on any other machine. Now, one thing right off the bat, this video is actually a product feature versus a straight product review, meaning that Creality has paid me to do this video and that kind of helps keep this channel running. But a big caveat with that, if I had gotten this machine and I thought it just sucked, I wouldn't have done this video whatsoever. So I am gonna keep this honest, just know that is the relationship on the back end. But with all that being said, this really is a nice machine. All the machines I've checked out, whether it's from Tour, Xtool, Niji, Atomstack, looking at the boxes to see what else is over there. A ton of different ones over the past couple years. It's kind of like Creality watched the development of all those different machines and kind of took the best things about each one and then combined them into one machine. And with those reviews I've done in the past, I try to point out the specific problems I think those machines have. And this guy answers a lot of those problems. First off, let's talk about where you will start. And that is what happens when you pull this out of the package. This is the first one I've gotten where it's pretty much completely assembled. Actually, when I opened the box, I was looking around for the instructions to double check that I was doing everything right. And because this was a pre-release unit, pretty sure those weren't included in the box, but I actually didn't even need the instructions because literally the entire frame was completely put together. A lot of times, you have to assemble all four parts, then you have to run belts and all that kind of stuff, which is not hard, but it is kind of annoying. This is all assembled in the factory and shipped directly to you. The only thing I had to put on here was this laser module, which is replaceable, which is a big plus, which we'll get into here in a minute, as well as these feet right down here. This is kind of similar to what you'd see with some other companies as well in the fact that you can have different kind of levels. So you can kind of stack these up and make it as high as you want it, depending on the material. Now, one thing to note, I do have this honeycomb underneath that you'll see in the footage as we're going through. This is not something that comes with the unit right off the bat. That's an additional purchase if you want to check it out. But a honeycomb is super beneficial, especially if you want to do cutting. And you really can only do cutting if you have a lot of power. And that's gonna be the next problem that I see with a lot of machines. Over the past few years, we've seen machines power go from 2.5 watts to 5 watts to 10 watts to 20 watts, and then this year, 40 watts. Crowley has kind of held back and then launched this machine. Specifically, there is a 5 watt, 10 watt, 22 watt, which is actually this one right here, and then a 40 watt module. So if you're looking at a machine where you just want to do some engraving, that 5 watt option is going to be great and it's going to save you a good bit of money. Now that higher power really doesn't do you much good if you can't also run it fast. This has a max speed of 22,000 millimeters per minute. You can see a video of it running pretty much at max speed right now. I honestly don't run my machines that high most of the times anyway, but having that option is great. And that is pretty much at the top end of any of the diodes that I have been able to test out, especially if you're engraving really light material, whether it's like cardstock or even cardboard, being able to go high speeds if you're doing like a photo engrave, which can take quite a while, it's nice that you can run it quick. Now with those high speeds, you typically need a good bit of stability, and this is a nice sturdy frame. You don't have the V-wheel setup that you see on some other machines. The entire frame is metal and it's a really solid construction. And just in general, there's some just really nice small quality of life improvements. It's just the fact that you have cabling that's really nice. You've got clips that help hold it, everything down. And in fact, the control and power for the laser module plugs in right here. And that is also where your air assist is versus having to route it all the way down to the brains of the machine. Now, probably the biggest thing that I have complained about over the years is when you get to these higher laser powers, you need some type of air assist. Not only is that a safety feature, so that's helping put out those flames that might be popping up, but it also gives you a cleaner cut because it's getting the dust and soot and debris away. This is great because they do provide you a compressor right here. And even though it's really small, it's super helpful. Uh, these are like little silicone feet that are super wiggly, which is nice because when this is running, it can wiggle, but it isn't gonna wiggle off your table, which I definitely have had a lot of compressors do that to me in the past. And then it just plugs with a nozzle directly into the top of the laser module itself. So this isn't like an add-on kit that a lot of other companies have done, integrated directly into the module itself. And that helps because the air is coming out right where your laser module is. So right there is also where your compressed air is going to be coming out. Now, once you get everything set up, another common problem that I've had, I know a lot of people have had, you're just not getting the type of cut or engrave that you think the machine can do, or you've seen pictures of, and it has a lot to do with focus. So they make it easy to focus this. There's screws right here on the side, and you can drop this up and down. There's actually two that locks it into place, but then they also provide you this guy. And this is something that no other company I have seen 
do in that it gives you options for focus at different levels. Because if you're going to engrave wood, you only want it focused at the very top. But as you start to cut through the wood, as the laser gets deeper and deeper, especially if you're doing multiple passes, you're gonna want the focus to be a little bit deeper. So they give you options for engraving, and then they give you three different options going all the way up to six millimeters for your thickness of material. When you're seeing all the tests that I am doing, I'm using three millimeters thick plywood, and that's kind of the typical stuff that I wind up using. Now, other than focus, you can still have problems with the performance of your machine in like the overall quality and they're doing a pretty good job helping to address this with what they're calling this triple monitoring system so there's three lights right here one for air one for fire and one for lens air specifically when this is turned on it can actually tell when there's air going through the module and I'll actually give you a red light if there is no air going through and then fire obviously you don't want that that is going to drastically affect not only your product but also potentially your machine and maybe even your shop and to help monitor that they have got I believe it is a IR sensor right here so it can detect if you've got fire under underneath it and then shut off the system. That isn't something I've seen integrated directly into the module itself. I've seen a couple other companies do that around the frame, uh, but I've tested it and a lot of times it doesn't even pick it up. So that's nice, this is built directly in. And then finally, this is an issue you're gonna run into regardless of any laser that you're using is the lens, which I'm gonna unscrew this nozzle so you can see it, will get dust and debris and all that kind of stuff. It can kind of like fog up. Just like if you're looking through glasses that are all smudgy and stuff, it's gonna be harder to see. So same with the laser light, not as much is gonna go through and it's not gonna be it's focused. So they have an indicator that lets you know if that lens is dirty and then they give you options to clean it. So you can kind of see that lens right there. Now probably the biggest problem you want to be aware of is safety and they do a good job of pretty much giving you all the options that are out there. So again you have that fire sensor directly on the module which will shut the machine off. If you tilt the machine or like move it around while it's running it's going to stop it as well. Then it's got your emergency stop right here so just the button that you hit that is right there front and center and they have a lock and key. So this has to be turned with the key to the on position to get this to run. I don't think I've seen that on any other diode machine. That's pretty common with your bigger CO2 machines. Now the last problem is actually how you control your laser. Specifically, does it support Lightburn? Lightburn is by far my favorite piece of software that I use to be able to run these machines. In fact, these test files that you're seeing me engrave and cut out, I'm running directly through Lightburn, really anything that I am engraving or cutting out. And that's something that machines haven't supported in the past, but it's nice to see that Creality does that out of the box, as well as the free option of laser Gerbil. Now that's great, but what if you just want to run this without having a computer nearby? They have a TF slot, which is like a little mini memory card that you can upload your design to after you process it through the software. Put it in here and run it. And then they give you this right here, which you will need to be able to run this without connected to a computer because you're going to need to not only home your machine, meaning it's going to use the limit switches on both sides so it knows like where this laser module is in relation to the frame. But then you need to figure out where this is going to run. And that is when you hit that frame, which is the exact same feature that you find in software. You hit frame and the laser is going to go around the outside border of whatever you are engraving or cutting out. And then you can adjust where that is with the keypad. And I think if you do like a long press, it moves it further. So that's super nice. You can figure out your design somewhere else, come out to the shop, drop in your memory card, get it set up and run it. And on the design side of the machine itself, there are just some other nice features in that they give you really easy access to control the tension on your belts. You can unscrew and then tighten this up and screw it back down right here for your X belt. Y is right here on the side on both ends. The motor that controls your Y axis is actually directly in the middle of the machine. It's right here in the front. A lot of times you just see that off to the side, which makes it a lot easier to kind of have it rack, especially when it's moving at those high speeds. Now you can check out their website to see all the different types of materials that you can engrave and cut. But more than likely, if you have been looking at these machines, you've probably seen lots of examples and this definitely holds up with those. One thing I really like to do is a cut test as well as as an engrave test for the Creality Falcon 2. And this stacks up really well against the competition. But again, probably the biggest factor of that is just the overall power. Normally, if the machines have the same power, they're gonna be pretty close. So the difference is you're gonna look for those other features like your top speed, which again, this one's super fast, having your integrated air assist, which now is like back here, or being able to run that offline or having your extra sensors. This is just a nice overall machine. Now, one thing I do recommend if you pick up any machine is to run some type of test file on all the different types of materials that you're gonna want to do because you're gonna be able to figure out what are my best settings if I want to engrave versus what are my best settings if I am wanting to 
cut. Now, if you wanna use my files through Lightburn, I have a link down in the description. And Lightburn can be a little bit confusing to get into. So I actually have a full course on Lightburn that will walk you through not only how to use these, but also how to do design stuff and some of the common problems that you might have. A link to that course is down in the description as well as a discount code just because you have watched this video. Since Creality started as a 3D printing company, I thought I would do a design showing how you can take different layers of wood and turn it into something that is more 3D. This is actually a really cool internal mechanism of a watch. It doesn't actually move, but it's like for display. Now, if you are looking at getting into lasers, but you have no idea where to start and what the other options that are out there, I did a full overview of those and gave you my recommendations for what I think you should check out. And you can do that right up there. All right, until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.